which hand ought to be controlling your golf swing? Should it be your lead hand? Should it be your trail hand? Should it be a combination of both hands? I'm going to try all three ways today with a seven iron and a driver. Track the results. They might surprise you. Stick around. Hey everybody and welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. Today I'm going to put myself through the ringer using a 7 iron and a driver, some shots with my lead hand, my left hand in this case, and I'm going to try some where my, my backhand, my trail hand, which is my dominant hand, actually controls the golf swing. And then I'm going to try and use a combination of both and see if I can kind of divide up the responsibilities and see if they work better in tandem together. We're going to warm up a little bit here and then we'll get started. Guys, real quick before we get into this video, I just want to say that if you'll click the little drop down arrow below this video and open up the description box, you'll see Bionic Gloves, Shop Indoor Golf, SundayGolf.com, and most importantly, you'll see Amazon.com on there. To help support me and keep me making videos, support the channel, you click the Amazon link, it takes you to your Amazon page, it costs you nothing extra, you don't have to sign up for anything, but any products that you purchase on Amazon, they give me a small amount of money off of every purchase, and it helps to accumulate and keep this channel going to buy things like cameras and microphones and lighting, and pay for the subscription services that I use out here on the simulator. I appreciate it very much if you'll go through and do that for me. On to the video. All right, microphone's over here so it doesn't shake all over the place. We're gonna start out with the trail hand. I am a right-handed golfer. That means I play on this side of the golf ball. I'm gonna try using my right hand or my trail hand to govern and guide this. I've got a seven iron in hand. We're gonna see what kind of distances I get as well as the dispersion. How, how well are they controlled? All right, let's take a couple of shots here and see what happens. Not the best strike in the world, but not bad. Carry a little bit past 150. All right, second shot with the seven iron. Trail hand or my right hand in control. That's a pretty solid strike. Ooh, it's carrying pretty far. They carried out to about 174. Looks like it rolls out to about 176. Yep, 176. Dispersion on these is not that bad. This one's a little bit off to the right. Carried a decent little distance. Let's see what the grand total is on this one. 163. Baby draw, struck fairly well, carrying out nicely, gives me a good distance here. Just a little left to target. Total of 173. All right, shot number two with the leading hand, my left hand. Again, baby draw, just a little left to target. Good carry on this one also. Total of 175, pretty consistent so far. Again, another little baby draw, this one right down the line. Felt really powerful, carrying out to about 173, getting out a little bit past 175. Baby draw. Really good strike. Carrying out to about 173, 174. It's pretty decent power. 177 total, the longest one total yet. All right, shot number two. Again, baby draw, good strike. Carrying about the same distance. Good strike, not my most controlled swing, off a little bit to the right, going to carry just a little bit shorter. What's the total? 169. All right. All right, so at the end of round one, which was the seven iron, the left hand, I've got to put the left hand being in control, I've got to put that as number one. Number two and a close second would be trying to use both hands in tandem 
and third place with a real lack of, of dispersion control and a lack of yardage control was my trail hand, my right hand, which is my dominant hand. I felt like I could apply more power, but it really wasn't the case. I was getting longer yardages with either the left hand or both hands in tandem. Let's move on to the driver and we'll wrap this up at the end and give you my final analysis. All right, again, we're gonna start off with that trail hand smash. We're really gonna try and just smash it with that trail hand. Nice little draw down the line. Carried out past 225. My average on this machine with driver is normally around 240. So this one got out to 236 total. Off to the right a little bit. Good flight though, decent strike. It's gonna carry out past 225 again. Not gonna get much roll. Looks like it's kind of the version of the last one, but a little bit off to the right. Yeah, 236 total. Ooh, that's way off to the right. Good strike though. Good strike, just way right. And this one's gonna carry a decent little yardage. This might be the longest one out of the three. Nope, 234.4, not that great. All right, time to switch it up to the lead hand, the left, the left hand for me. Oh, that is just a fantastic strike. Tiniest little draw. It's going to carry out to 225 almost exactly. Roll out a little bit. I don't think I'm going to gain a lot of yardage here. Now, 235, but that was a line ball. And dead down the middle. Tiny little draw. It's going a little bit left. Not the best strike in the world, but it's going to be okay. It's going to be playable. It's going to be a little shorter than I would have liked. Yeah, 227.4. Oh, another one just barely right. Decent strike, carrying out past 225, pretty consistent, 233 total. All right, shot number two with both hands. Oh, that's a pretty good strike, but that is a straight block. That one's going to get the most distance, but it was a dead block. I'm almost off the fairway here. 243, 95 mile an hour club head speed, but a total block. It's a high baby draw. It's going to be a little short. Well, that's nice. carried out to 224. No roll on that whatsoever. That might be the shortest one out of all of them. Yeah, 228, not fantastic. All right, that wraps up all three combinations with the driver. Now with the driver, the first one I did was, again, the trail hand, my right hand, my dominant hand. I did feel like I could apply some power to it, and I did have, uh, I think, the first or the second drive that I got out there to be a pretty decent yardage, but then, you know, the dispersion was not that fantastic. If you were up on the tee and you really needed to make sure that you got it in the fairway, I would have a little bit of a hard time putting that one in play. Then we go to the left hand, and you could have probably thrown a blanket over the width. It was probably a five to six yard maybe track. When everything is said and done and you've got to choose one of these paths, what are you basing your choice on? You're probably going to base it on something that you know is bulletproof, something you can rely on and count on, something that's going to be consistent and predictable. And for me, there was a clear winner. It was the left hand, the lead hand, pulling it through. If you had a wagon or some sort of a cart that you were trying to get to go down the street, you could get behind it and push it. And you could certainly apply power, but it's going to try and swim one way or the other on you because you're pushing from behind. Whereas if you're pulling, if you're pulling, you can also apply a lot of power and speed to it as well, but that cart is going to follow the direction and the velocity that you're pulling it in. So it just stands to reason that it's going to give you more control. And for me, that's exactly what I found out here today with a seven iron and a driver. When using both hands, the problem I have with that is that on Tuesday, maybe your right hand feels a little bit stronger and a little bit more 
on track with your swing, but then Wednesday comes along or Thursday comes along and ah, the left hand is really feeling like it can do the job. And so they're constantly battling for control because one of them needs to be in control. So in my case, I'm gonna choose one hand or the other and I think the lead hand, the left hand for me, is definitely the knockout punch.